Yeah, we are back at this thing, and we are going to continue where we left off at. Okay, it was timestamp 2245, something around there. That'll work. But I also want to bring to the table a few things I've seen online. And as I was saying, there are people who are waking up, and they are realizing that Jesus is did not die for your sins and also Jesus is not God now some of these people have been knowing this stuff for a while all right so what I'm going to show y'all first is a clip okay from a Bible scholar named Bart Ehrman all right a lot of people are familiar with this guy and I'm going to show that clip right now. We don't have a consistent, independent narrative. What we have are independent narratives that contradict each other that are all written 40, 50, 60 years later by people living in a different part of the world who didn't know any eyewitnesses who aren't even speaking the same language. I mean, so what do historians do with sources like that? They don't simply accept what they say because they happen to agree with their religious views. I am firmly convinced that Jesus never talked about himself as God. If you ask any Jew living right. in the first century, you know... And that's right there, you know... He was talking about the inconsistencies of the Gospels and how they came after Jesus departed. And he also brought out how many of the top scholars do not even believe that Jesus made himself God. Uh, you know, you, you think that person's the Messiah. You mean he's God? They said, what? <laughs> what, what? What do you mean? No, I've said he's the Messiah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like claiming, you know, if you claim to be, you know, the prime minister, you're God. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have groups of people. Say and that's so real, man. People are so dumb. Just because he is the Messiah doesn't mean he's God. All right. So now I want to show another clip. And that was by Bart Ehrman, and that is entitled, Did Jesus Even Claim to Be God? Okay, you can look that up for yourself. And then I also want to show another clip. This is going to be from Eli Israel, and I'm going to uh, fast forward to timestamp 2649. Repent. Change and turn from all your ungodliness, and it shall not become to you the punishment of iniquity. If you don't want to be punished for your iniquity, repent, return to the Most High only, and keep His commandments while there is still time to do so. Verse 31 Cast away from yourselves. All your ungodliness wherein ye have sinned against me. Christian lights keep the commandments of the Most High, except the one that says, Thou shalt have no other God before me. They keep the God of our Christian slave masters before the Most High God. They simply gave him a black face and a black name, but they continue to Keep him before the Most High God, claiming that we cannot get to the Most High God without going through him. That is idolatry. The Most High says, cast away from yourselves. Yeah. So I wonder what these camps is going to do. We got brothers, brothers that don't believe Jesus died for they sins, okay? And he put up the white Jesus and he put up IUIC's black Jesus, okay? Like I told you, IUIC is Christianity. They organize Christianity. One believes Jesus is black that died for their sins. One believes Jesus is white that died for their sins. And that's some Christians. Not all Christians believe in a white Jesus, okay? So now we want to get back to where we was at. Nazareth for a time until King Herod. And I'm going to put it on this right here so it's not so loud. Here we go. It was dead. And that's why Jesus was called a Nazarene. Listen right here. Matthew chapter 2, verse 23. 
And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. What prophet said that? That's what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. Right now. What prophet said that? As you notice, we had to constantly keep going around the circle. I had to keep asking him because I asked him for a reference. And he wants to keep explaining in Matthew. So I just got down to the point and I said, what prophet said that? So now he's finding the prophet. I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. Give me one sec. I can't remember off the top it, it, of my head. There is no scripture in the entire Bible where it says he shall be called a Nazareth, okay, or, or a Nazarene, okay. When that's why, like when you read the Gospels, oh, there we go, there we go. Go I found it. Isaiah chapter eleven, verse one. There we go. Okay. Isaiah chapter eleven, verse one. Read that. Uh, let me let me go. Let me go. Let me get it in. Uh, let me get in my King James word is in Isaiah 11 look uh, and there shall come forward a root and there shall come forward a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and in the fear of the Lord, and shall make him quick under of um, quick of shall make him a quick understanding and fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove the iniquity for the meek. What is he talking about, y'all? Y'all see that? He said he found it, and I asked him, what prophet said that? Okay, so what he did was he must have went to Google real quick and found a reference, but he didn't know how to break it down, okay? And now he's just reading. Of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips. He... At the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked, and righteous shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reign. Okay, that's not saying that. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is, let's go back to that. Matthew. But do you know where the stem of Jesse is, right? It says, that he, it says that he shall be called a Nazarene by the prophets. Yes, because they understood in that time. You got to understand, they understood in that time which house are now. How blind can you be? I'm asking for the scripture reference. We ask him for the scripture reference. How can we go back and find that in the Bible? Do y'all understand where I'm coming from? Y'all yeah. know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. If the Bible says he shall be called a Nazarene by the prophets, then that means we need to find where it was said in the Old Testament. But he keeps explaining. Let's keep going. It's a range from. You got to understand, where you were born, you know which house you're from. And from the house of, from the stem of Jesse, and from his roots, it's from Nazarene, Nazareth. No, listen to what I'm saying. It's not it's it's I wouldn't I wouldn't have even said that. But it says, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, and it says prophets, S, not just one. It's talking about multiple, at least two. Okay, because it says prophets as in plural. It says he shall be called a Nazarene. Okay, and 
when Matthew or whoever, because um, after studying the Gospels, I truly believe that all the Gospel writers were anonymous, okay, since we got the letters of Paul before we got the letters of the Gospels. And if you look it up, it literally says they exactly were not eyewitnesses. They were all anonymous writers. And these people, what they're doing is they're, when they're writing they're referring back to old scriptures. They're referring back to the old scriptures because there's no, uh, thus saith the Lord, there's no prophetic utterance. So whoever's writing Matthew, whoever's writing Mark, Luke, and John, they are all writing from their story. They're writing from their own inspiration, whether you say it's of the Holy Spirit or not. But what I'm telling you is there's not no mention of Thus saith the Lord, and, and, and God is speaking, and they're writing it down. It's nothing like how Moses was on the mountaintop with God. It's t not even like Jeremiah, because when Jeremiah would write, he would God would say, Thus saith the Lord, and he would write down everything. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's no mention of Thus saith the Lord in the entire New Testament. In the entire New Testament. The Lord was with them. They know that. God was with them. They can't say, thus saith the Lord. Where does it they say that? Say, but they do say, um, let, me, let, me, let me say, let me, let me go. Where does they say that? And they then go I got to, and then I got to, and then I got to pick back through all the lengthy uh, stuff you said, because you said a few things, and I'm going to ask you a few questions on those things. But yeah, show yeah, me no. where, where it says um, what you was just talking about. Would you, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. No, I told you there's no mention of thus saith the Lord in the entire New Testament. And you said, oh, God was with them. So they didn't have to have a thus saith the Lord. That was the Old Testament I was quoting, though. I didn't quote anything thus saith the Lord in the New Testament. That was all Old Testament. Remember, I told you, I'm only, I was only trying to prove it through Old Testament scriptures. Because if I go to the New Testament. He's beating around the bush. Okay, he just said with his own mouth that there's no mention of thus saith the Lord because God was with them. All right, so they didn't practically need that. So I called him on it. So I'm like, where that's at in the Bible? And, and he's still going on about the Old Testament. I'm asking him to show me what he just said in the Bible. I can prove to you that. Jesus no. is God and he did came to die for your sins. No, no, no. We're talking about just right now when we are talking about the Nazarene. Okay. When I just said that there's no mention of thus saith the Lord in the entire New Testament, you said that they didn't have to because God was with them. And I'm like, where does it say that at? Or is that just your own understanding that God was with them? And so therefore there's no mention. Uh, they didn't have to say thus saith the Lord no more. No, thus them saying, thus say, look, you gotta understand, before that, it's saying, which was spoken by the prophets, then they quote the prophets, quotation, thus saith the Lord. They quoted what the prophets said, and they, that, not, not, they said, thus saith the Lord, they quoted what the prophets said. That's like if you said something, and then I said, oh. Now he's lost. He's lost. <laughs> He didn't get what I said. I'm asking for a scripture reference, okay? And now he's trying to explain the thus saith the Lord. And when a prophet wrote, he's talking about people writing down what the prophet said. When the prophets would say thus saith the Lord, they was under direct inspiration of God. So they was writing as the Lord spoke, all right? And now we're going to keep going. This is what, you know, such and such said, thus saith the Lord, out of, out of, you know, he will be called a Nazarene. So it wasn't that they said that God said it to them. They quoted Isaiah in quotation marks. That's the whole point of a quote. It, don't say, it don't say Isaiah in, in verse 23. It just says prophets. See, I'm not trying to add to it or take away. I'm just looking at it. It says prophets. It don't say what prophet was. 
and the word Nazarene or Nazareth is not even mentioned in the in the Old Testament. Okay, uh, a lot of people will actually look at that scripture and and they will call it an error. Okay, I'm not trying to go that deep with you. I'm not going to go that deep with you. But um, when it says "Thus saith the Lord," that stuff stopped in Malachi in the book of the entire new testament there is no direct god speaking no more and you know it stops in malachi because after malachi was the book of matthew the new testament no it could have been the new testament didn't start until after jesus su supposedly died they were in new testament don't you understand that jesus was circumcised the eighth day according to moses he was following the Torah, okay, it was they was going by the law, and supposedly, okay, real Christians they'll tell you that um, there is not the New Testament after Malachi. The New Testament starts towards the end of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show y'all what I mean by that because the New Testament did not start with Matthew, okay. The New Testament started with what? With the book of Acts. And I'm going to show y'all this real quick. When? I'm going to ask Google. When did the New Testament start? All right, as y'all can see right now, what does that say? The New Testament begins in Acts, not the, Matthew. The New Testament begins in Acts. That's where it starts. It doesn't Damn. start with Matthew because according to the Christians, Jesus didn't die. So the New Covenant, new covenant wasn't ratified. So he's still not even <laughs> getting that. He still believes that the New Testament starts when you flip that blank page and it goes from malachi Damn. to new testament he he truly believes that's the new testament so now we're going to keep going and you're going to understand what i'm talking about to him but he doesn't agree with that going into acts that's the new testament new testament because when jesus was there and he didn't die for their sins that was still old covenant they were still uh, under the I New Testament. I disagree with what you're saying. I disagree That's with Christianity. You gotta understand. That's what Christianity teach. This He's disagreeing with his own beliefs. Okay. Yeah. What I said is what the Christians say. The Christians say the New Testament begins in Acts. And he says he disagrees with that. It's not no, it's not that what Christianity teaches if you read the Bible and understand, right? Now, Malachi was the last book in the Old Testament. Can we agree on that? Yeah, if we go, if we separate okay. it, well, yeah. is the last book of the Old Testament, right? Which all the prophets were speaking of Jesus and the Messiah coming. No, the Lord I, the I never, I never agreed with you on all that stuff. I let you talk. I pretend you did. I just asked if you agree with me that Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. Yeah, that's all. I'm in our say. Bible, yeah. Okay. Now, if Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. Everyone was saying, thus saith the Lord, because the Lord was not with them. When Jesus came, the Lord was with them. So it was no more, thus saith the Lord. Damn! What y'all think about that? What do y'all think about that? What he just said? I want somebody to tell me what they think about that. Just come to the mic and go ahead. That he's just worshiping Jesus? That's right. That's right. He said there was no need for no more prophets because God came and God was born and was pushed out by a woman and God was circumcised. That don't even make sense. God is untouchable, untouchable by death. OK, God doesn't have a mom. God doesn't have a dad. OK. Now, I want to keep going. Jesus is the God. He is the Lord. He is God. So it wasn't no more. Where is a scripture in the Bible where it says verbatim, Jesus is God? Nowhere. Nowhere. All a Christian can do is do their little witchcraft power and go to scriptures like where it says, before Abraham, I am. 
Okay, and go to scriptures like John in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. There's no scripture plainly where Jesus is saying, look, man, I am God. Okay, worship me. Skip the father. I didn't took over this thing. There's no scriptures like that. All right. So now we're going to keep going. Uh, it, it wasn't nothing else to prophesy. The only thing that was what was left was. For him to Damn. There was nothing else to prophesy. Now I'm gonna go to my Bible app and I'm gonna type in prophets. I'm gonna type in prophets. Now if I go to after Jesus, supposedly, okay, they say died, but I believe God rescued him. Here we have in the book of Acts. Let me see. This is going to be Acts 13, 1. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. So this is after Jesus supposedly died. There's prophets in the book of Acts. But he said since Jesus came, there was no need for no more prophets, okay? I have to slow y'all down and I have to show y'all how to be able to use God's Bible when people come with all that babble. He just lied. And I'm going to show you another scripture about a prophet. Acts 15, 32. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them so according to the bible there was more prophets okay i'm gonna show you another one i'm gonna show you another prophet and and there's more I, i'll just stop with this one this would be acts 11 28 uh let me give you yeah i'll read acts 11 28 and there stood up one with them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar now this Agabus was a prophet I'm approve it Acts 21 10 and as we tarried there many days there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. Now, you got to know what you're talking about. You got to be on point. You got to know your, your scriptures, okay? Because right there, that was a complete lie. Now we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Still, all of the prophet, all of the prophecies that the prophets had spoken of him, and that's what he did. He healed the blind, healed the sick, you know, um, um, make make people you know straight from cripple. He did all those things spoken by the prophet. Right? Okay, okay. okay. So now he preached the gospel. They obviously they can't Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. They can't write anything unless something is preached, right, from God Himself. Jesus is God, so he preached the gospel to them, right? And they had to wait till. He did y'all hear that, y'all? Did y'all hear that? It's sad. Let's keep going. He proved that he was the true Messiah. And the way that he did that was when he did what? Died and rose from the dead and went and eyewitness over 500 different people. And then they said that truly is the Lord. Because you even had Timothy, for instance, he didn't believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Right. And when, when everyone came to him was like, oh, Timothy is Jesus rose from the dead. We sat and ate with him, right? Because Timothy was the only one there when Jesus first appeared to the male disciples, right? He no, man, you're, there. you're off. You're talking about John. Where the hell did Timothy come in as that? What are you talking about? Timothy came in with Paul. I'm saying, listen to what I just said. You said, you, you, you just brought they up Timothy. They didn't truly. And he's a smart ass. He can't accept when he's wrong. For nothing. Now let's keep going. I truly believe that he was the Messiah until he died and rose again from the grave, right? When he died and rose again from the grave, 
Jesus appeared to Mary first, right? He appeared to Mary first. She ran and told the other disciples, right? And then when Jesus appeared to his disciples while they were at me, Timothy was not there. Timothy was not there. He wasn't there with the disciples on Jesus' first appearance when Jesus rose from the dead, right? No, no, man, you're off. Timothy is not mentioned until 2 Corinthians. What are you talking about? That's what I keep trying to tell you. Like, you're not studied up to know that you're, you must be talking about John. No, I'm not talking about John. Show me scripture. Right. Show me scripture. Right. Let me go. Give me the scripture. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Scripture. Yeah. Let me go to scripture. Yeah. Not that. That's what happens when you try to give people a Bible commentary when you long winded. You want to talk all this stuff instead of just saying. Hey, there ain't no scripture in the Bible where it says God is going to send Jesus to die for your sins. He's trying to give Bible history. He already said that Herod was ruling over the Philistines. I let that slide. He already talked about the prophets, okay, that Jesus was the last prophet, okay, that there was no more need for prophesying. Now he's talking about Timothy. Let's keep going. Not your own words. We want Bible and scriptures, man. You said what? We don't want your own words. We want scripture and verse. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go to the verse right now. I'm going to go to the verse right now. Go to the verse right now. Yeah, I'm waiting on that. Later. <laughs> Y'all gotta have humility. You gotta have humility, okay? We brothers, okay? We as brothers. Neither one of us is messengers. Neither one of us is prophets. We gotta have some type of humility, like, you know what, bro? My bad. My bad, bro. My bad, bro. Uh, I was off, okay? That's called humility. That's a characteristic we all got to have. The ability to admit when you're wrong. So he's still looking? Yeah. <laughs> you have it. You have it in. No. Say it again? No. You have it in John, you have it in John 20, 25, John chapter 20, verse 25. John chapter 20, verse 25? Yes. He meant John 2024, 20, not 2025, because it don't. And I'll bring that out to y'all in a minute and I'll show y'all. What is that talking about, Timothy? Sorry, my bad. What's his name? Oh, Thomas. My bad, Thomas. Yeah, bro, yo, bad man. You got to be on point with what you're talking about, man. You uh, got to be on point. No, you're not. No, you're not, man. I've been letting you. Now let me talk. Let me talk. I've been letting you talk this whole time. I've been patient. Come on now. Let me talk. I've been letting you talk. I let letting you have your stuff. You got to be on point, man. Okay, you got to be on point. You can't let somebody know the Bible. And, and, and call you out on something and you stubborn and you confessing and you're like no 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 and I'm like Timothy is not mentioned until Corinthians okay so go ahead go ahead with your point you can keep going yeah I know what I'm talking about Thomas nickname was Tim Timothy that, that was his nickname yeah. That was his name. Bible chapter and verse. Where was his nickname at, man? We can't go by your your your, your commentary. We got to have scripture and verse. Where does it say Timothy was his nickname? Let me see. Let me see. 
Man, I've been studying this Bible, man. I know what I'm talking about. Timothy was a half Greek. He didn't come on until um, Paul came on the scene. You talking about Thomas, his nickname, what? Didymus? There we go. Didymus. There we go. Yeah. Didymus. There Not no Timothy. That's two different names, man. There we go. There we go. Chittimus. All right, keep going. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was Chittimus. It was Chittimus. Didymus. D. Chittimus? Yeah, with a D. No, it, it was Chittimus, right? No, with a D. Didymus. It's John eleven sixteen, John 20, 24, John 21, 2. Thomas, Nick, he, he was called Didymus. And it says that in the King James Version? Yeah, I'm looking at, I mean, that's the, I mean, anytime I'm trying to go with the scriptures, I, we always use King James just as the foundation. If I'm out there and we bringing it out and I'm trying to like, I, I first want to at least go to the King James and then, you know, if they don't got the understanding, we go to other translations. But yeah, the King James is, he is Didymus. Okay, got you. What is but, it in your um, version? Uh, it was saying Tidamus. Did you pray today? Did you it pray is? today? Yeah, I have the um, I have the NLT version and I have the ESV version. Oh yeah. man, you liar! You little liar! Why are you being a liar? Why are you lying on the Bible? Why are you Christians lying on the Bible? Okay, now I have. The New Living Translation, and I want someone to read the New Living Translation. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. It don't say nothing about no titty mus. <laughs> it don't say nothing about that. Now let's read the ESV version. Now, Thomas, one of the 12, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. All right. So neither one of them. Did that say Tittymus? No, no. I don't see Tittymus. Dang. Why are you lying, bro? Why are you lying? And you see in the comments, they don't say nothing about that. The Christians, they protect their own. They got all the negative words to say about Muhammad and the rock and all this stuff. But they letting their boys sit up there and lie. The boy is literally lying through his teeth on the Bible. Don't have enough humility to just say, you know what, I'm off. That's what you get when you believe Jesus died for your sins. You just sin crazy. All right? So now let's keep going. Man, you tripping, bro. You way off. Well, go ahead, man. Keep going. But, um, yeah. This is why nobody said, thus saith the Lord, because the Lord was with them. Emmanuel. God's with us. Jesus was with them. So, so God, God is our God. brother? Damn. Huh? So God is our brother? God is not our brother, but Jesus is God. So God is our brother. What kind of sense does that make? Damn! You just said Jesus is God. So I'm asking you, is God our brother? And nobody never asked you that. And you got a little stuff. You're like... God is not our brother. Now watch him end up saying Jesus is our brother. Watch it. He gonna try to. He gonna sneak say it. Let's. I'm gonna go back a little bit. Yeah, right. Huh? So God is our brother. God is not our brother, but Jesus is God. So God is our brother, then, right? If Jesus no. is God, God is not our brother. You gotta understand, Jesus, God humbled Himself into the flesh, right? Humble himself okay. into the flesh and became man. He was still God, but he was man. Of course, he couldn't just tell everyone, oh, I'm God, I'm God. 
but I have verses, multiple verses to show you that he was God. And Whoa, I, what up? Of course he couldn't just tell everybody he's God. But if, well, when we get done, when we get towards the end of this thing, he's going to be literally trying to drive a tent peg in my head. He's going to be trying to force Christianity on me. And he's going to constantly keep saying, Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. But he said, well, of course, Jesus couldn't just say he was God. OK, so. I'm telling you, man, this is this is your brain on drugs. This is Christianity's witchcraft at its finest. We I'm going to go a few more minutes. I'm going to go about four more minutes and we'll be done. But you know, what? I don't I don't want to go to a discussion where, you know, Jesus is God. You know, I don't believe that. And I don't want to go into a huge discussion with that. OK, because I know for a fact in studying the Bible there's no verbatim scripture where he says, you know, I am God, worship me. He tells us to worship God. He that. I, I, disagree. I disagree with that, man. I, I don't I don't I don't believe that Jesus is God, but I do want to stay on the topic. And I and I let you have a lot of long wind. I let you talk more than me. And I want you to continue to stay on the topic on a scripture coming from God Almighty saying that Jesus is going to die for your sins. Now, do you have a scripture where you, you can you at least give me a scripture where Jesus says I'm going to die for your sins? Oh, yeah. I wanted he's saying I'm going to die for your sins. I said I wanted saying he's going to die for your sins. Did y'all hear that? Right. Yes. All right. I'm nice. I'm chill. If y'all notice, I'm nice. Let's keep going. All right, I'll give you that one. And then I, I want something coming from the Old Testament. Because um, let me ask you a question. Did anybody ever call Jesus Emmanuel in the New Testament? Besides when he was born? Because it says no. he shall be called. It says he shall be called Emmanuel, and we know we got that from Isaiah. And in the New Testament, when he was born, it says he shall be called Emmanuel. But was there any disciples or any common people walking up to him saying Emmanuel, Emmanuel, or was it just like no. there? Nobody called him Emmanuel. Okay. All right. Okay. So show me a scripture where Jesus says, "I'm going to die for your sins." Um, Matthew 20, Matthew chapter 26, uh, 27 to 28. Matthew 26, 27 through 28. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. And break it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for the remission of sins okay all right now, when I look at that, I can literally look at it and say, okay, so you're saying that his blood is going to be shed for your sins. That's how you looking at it, right? I mean, yeah, that's the only way you can look at it. All right. Okay, so is he saying that I'm going to die for your sins? Well, when was the only time his blood ever shed? I don't believe his blood was ever shed. Now, I'll give you... I, 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 I'll, let, I'll let you get that. I'll let you get that. All right, y'all. So we're going to pick back up. And we're going to go through this thing. 
We're going to go through this thing because y'all need to know how to see through people's bullshit. And that's why when you know the word, when you know God's word, you can see through people's bullshit. People cannot pull the wool over your eyes. When you know God's word, it ain't like you a prophet. You're not a prophet, but God's word is that prophet. And God's word is going to be like, hold up, hold up, hold up. That don't sound right. That ain't right, okay? So y'all have to know y'all sword, okay? Now we're going to pick back up, and he's going to attempt to show me a scripture from the Old Testament where God is saying Jesus is going to die for your sins. All right, now it's about that time. It's about that time to get in these scripts already. All right. 